Well, the cost of borrowing money just went up again. Just a short time ago, the Federal Reserve raised interest rates another quarter of a percent. Mike Giordano, financial advisor with Williams Wealth Management, is here to talk to us about what all of this means. Mike, we know there was a lot of uncertainty about what the Fed was going to do today. Did this move surprise you? In the end, it wasn't very surprising, but um, you know when you talk in circles? I mean, you're very eloquent. You don't talk in circles, oh, Gabby. Yes, uh, but for the rest of us who do talk in circles, you know, the Fed was going to do a quarter point about a month ago, and then all of a sudden we got some hot employment data, and then they were like, maybe we have to go half a percent, and then all of a sudden the banks started collapsing, and then they, there was talk that they wouldn't do anything, and then they came all the way back to full circle, and they did a quarter point hike, and they expect one more quarter point hike after this. Okay, so you mentioned the recent bank issues that we've all been watching. Is the Fed concerned about that crisis? Is widening? Well, they said it several times today that the, the, the banks, the bank system is secure, stable, and resilient. St- secure, stable, resilient. Uh, but they, but it's so early to tell. They don't really know how much more this could, the, uh, other off effects that could happen here in this situation. So they're going to be monitoring this stuff. So it's too soon to know one way or the other. But they do think it can help them in their fight against inflation because banks seem to be tightening their lending standards. And when you think about how much money a person or a business can spend, it's how much money you make plus how much somebody will loan you. So if you make a hundred thousand dollars a year and somebody will loan you $200,000 a year. You could spend theoretically $300,000 a year, but if the banks say, hey, that's a little too risky, we're only going to lend you $100,000, it cuts down how much you could spend or how much a company could spend, and that kind of slows down uh, the economy. So how do we then, how should we invest our money through this really volatile period? It sounds like a broken record, but you got to be disciplined and you got to be defensive because it's hard to say how this will all play out. The markets could start, you know, the, the clouds could clear just like Chris was saying earlier, you know, we're going to have a nice sunny day tomorrow. That could totally happen in the markets. Um, but given how much uh, they've hiked rates, the overwhelming uh, uh, likelihood is that you are going to see some damage, possibly a recession. And so you want to be nimble that you can take advantage of either situation. As you say, in short, the outlook remains really foggy right now. So so we need to remain flexible. You need to remain flexible. Uh, you know, when, when I'm driving up to Pennsylvania to visit my parents, well, it sometimes takes three, four hours just to get to Charlotte. And so <laughs> I want to get out of the car, right? And so when it comes to your portfolio, you don't want to get out of the car. You want to be able to keep driving. You want to keep making progress. So you want some of those growth assets like stocks that can give you performance over the long term, outpace inflation. But you want to have some cash and some short-term bonds that will give you that flexibility that if we go into a recession, you have ammunition to put in the markets. All right. And, and great analogy there, too. I try. <laughs> you do. Great. Mike, thank you so much. Good to see you. You're As back. always, we'll see you next week. We'll be right back.